So I wanted to introduce Nixia. I always do it by asking this question, okay? So if I offered you millions of dollars, like you are going to make 50000 a month for the rest of your life to go into space for three years, what would you say? My answer is no. I've seen those movies. The artsy guy always seems to die off in space. Um, so no thank you. But the benefit of being an author is that you can kind of make characters do what you wouldn't do. Uh, and so my main character, Emmett Atwater, says yes. Uh, and really he feels like he can't say no. His dad works night shifts. His mom is on the top of the transplant list. He isn't always getting three meals a day. And so when he's offered this lottery ticket opportunity, it is, it's, a, it's an automatic yes. Um, that said, there's always a good twist in a good book. And so, of course, Emmett finds out that the money's not guaranteed and that he and nine other contestants will be competing for the right to go to an alien planet uh, and mine a substance called Nixia. Um, and the whole space travel that they're experiencing will be an in-flight competition where they are accumulating points and sort of battling with each other. Uh, and the thing that I really love is that um, Emmett is going to find out that these other contestants are from similar backgrounds as him. They have similar life experiences, and they want this as desperately as he does. And so it becomes necessary to form alliances. Emmett's going to make a few enemies as well. Uh, but as he goes along, he is going to kind of test the idea of, like, what happens when you reach for your lottery ticket, but other people are reaching for it as well. And what happens to, like, what would you be willing to sacrifice to change your life forever? How much of your humanity are you willing to let slip through your fingers to come home a king? Uh, and Emmett asks all of those questions as he launches into space alongside these other nine contestants. Uh, so one of the things I want to talk about is my inspiration for this book. Um, and when I started writing it, the inspiration was, was threefold. Uh, first, I wanted to write something that I loved. Uh, I think that's an obvious one. It's incredibly difficult to write things that you don't really care about. Uh, the second one, I was teaching at the time, so I really wanted to write something that fit the style that my students seem to like. And so it has a breathless pace. It's a very fast novel. Uh, it's full of twists and turns that I really don't think you'll see coming. Um, so there's a lot that was inspired by my students. And the third thing, and probably the most important thing, uh, comes from my time at Jordan High School in Durham, North Carolina. I had a student uh, who we'll call Q. Uh, and halfway through the semester, I had, I had a bookshelf, kind of like the one that you see behind me, full of books. I had taken time as a first-year teacher who, if you've ever had one, we're all enthusiasm and no direction. Uh, I had taken time the summer before I started uh, to find every good young adult book that I could find. Um, I hunted them down, I put them on my shelves, and I had this set up so that students could take whatever books they wanted. And Q came up to me in the middle of that um, in the middle of that semester, and he said, you know, Mr. Rankin, uh, I'm not in any of these books. And I was like, that's a weird thing to say. Like, they don't know you. And he's like, no, no, you don't understand. I'm not in any of these books. There's no characters that look like me. There's no characters that talk like me. I'm not on these shelves. And so I had a young black teenager saying, I'm not in these. These are the best books that you can find in YA, but I, I don't find myself in them. Um... And so that created quite a crisis. I, I had to first react as a teacher and a reader. And so I immediately went to libraries and Goodwill and, and tried to hunt down the books of Kwame Alexander or Jason Reynolds. Or if I was hunting them down this year, I'd probably be putting The Hate You Give on the shelf or Nick Stone's Dear Martin. And next year would be Elizabeth Acevedo's The Poet X or um, J. Cole's uh, Tyler Johnson Was Here. Some great books that if Q picked it off the shelf, he'd open it up and feel like he was reading characters that looked and talked and reflected who he was. Um, uh, but as a writer, uh, it also was important for me, who I have control of my universe, I have control of my characters and who goes in it and who goes out of it. Um, and so it was important for me to write a book 
that I could take back to that classroom and put it in the middle of the room. I wanted all of the kids in my class who were incredibly diverse from different cultures and backgrounds and socioeconomic classes, um, I wanted all of them to be able to pull those books off the shelf and say, oh yeah, like I recognize these characters. He talks like me. He, he, he looks like me. Um, he comes from the same background as me. And so that uh, was probably the major inspiration, that, that moment that I had with Q uh, all those years ago.